City. We're talking with the families of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims. And in just a minute, we're going to be talking with Jeffrey Dahmer's parents, their first time coming on a talk show since their son was murdered in a Wisconsin prison. Um, you had a comment. I, I guess you were just as moved as the rest of us watching Reed in court that day. You have what to say? Very moved. I just wanted to commend you for your bravery on coming out here today and mm -hmm. speaking. I'm sure every time you talk about it hurts, but maybe also helps. I just want you to know we're all with you. Thank you. We are with you. That's that's very good. How do you move on? I mean, because a lot of us are really in awe that you have so much courage to do what you're doing today. Where do you get that from? How do you keep on with your lives? Well, it was hard before his death, but since his death has happened, we're going to turn this into a business, and we know that he wouldn't like that. Mm -hmm. So this is our way of getting back at him. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. all the so, money in the world would never be able to, you know, bring our loved ones back or anything, you know. But he owes me. The city owes me. The police department owes me. They all owe me money. So you're angry. Money or whatever. We're very angry. We're really mm -hmm. upset we're about the whole fire. thing. We're full of fire. And we're going you know? to fight just in case if this should happen again. Right. Which, when we finish, I don't think whoever tries to commit a, a hideous crime like this well, think twice, because we're going to put a stop to this. Because yeah, there's always going to be another Jeffrey Dahmer out there. He's probably running around the streets right now, but he hasn't got discovered. So we are here to educate the public, be, you know, as victims. Mm -hmm. We're the victims. We've always been victimized by everybody. Because you know something? This could happen to any of us. Nobody's immune Everyone to this. here in this audience is a target. Uh huh. You said that you weren't real happy with the way you were treated in court during that whole case either. No, mm -hmm. no. We were just treated awful. You know, we couldn't have showed any emotions, or else the lawyers will call it outbursts. But then you can get the general public in there um, that had that were admirers of the serial killer, and they can say whatever they wanted to say. But the families weren't allowed to say anything. And we were very exhausted. The mm -hmm. trial started from sun up until sundown. We were there every day. We couldn't go to sleep. We couldn't show no emotion. Even the judge went to sleep. He was mm -hmm. actually sitting there asleep. Mm -hmm. When we doze off, the sheriff would come over there and tap us. And if he had to come twice, he would escort us out of the courtroom. Before we got to the courtroom, we had to be searched. Mm -hmm. But Sherry and Lionel Dahmer had reserved seats. They had uh, private entry. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that. We, right. we are the victims, not right. them. It's their son that yeah. did this to us. Right. We were treated like the criminals. Mm -hmm. That's how we were treated in court. From the audience. Well, on that last statement about how you were treated in court, I'd just like to say thank you for the 25-year-old inmate who took care of this little problem for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. Secondly, secondly to the attorney, I'd like to know what type of monetary gain are these families going to receive, seeing how there's really nothing left now but monetary well, that, gain. that isn't true. We've got judgments already for the eight families that I represent and $10 million against Jeffrey Dahmer. Other families have gotten judgments. I want to make a couple points. The families all have to stick together. Any efforts I do for my eight families, it applies equally to all the families. Now, what we have, the one thing that we can do to get money for the families is get the artifacts that were in Jeffrey Dahmer's apartment when he was arrested. That's in police custody now. I want that property. I want it sold at a public auction. It's got to be here in New York. This is where it all happens. We're going to have an auction of all Jeffrey Dahmer's property. We want, this is going to be now, what Thomas, we call Now, Thomas, you're talking about drills. We're you're talking about, about chainsaws. We're talking about right. You're talking about residue talking about left on carpets. Everything. This everything. Like, Rolanda, pails. Rolanda, what Jeffrey Dahmer did to my brother, I don't care if I have to sell his tooth, okay? Because that's just how I feel. And there will also be... And, and, and I, this is gross, but this is the reality. Yeah. There's also the painted skull you talked That's about. Right. The uh, skeleton. Is that yeah, part yeah, of no, what no, you're no, talking no. about? Draw the line no, no. the pictures and that type of thing. Okay. Right? It's, mm -hmm. the, it's going to be the concrete property. Like the, it's going to be the vat, the refrigerator, the hypodermic needle, the handcuffs. We got videos that he used to watch. The Exorcist, where the Exorcist three that movie is where he got while his he was doing in his victims, mm -hmm. that type of thing. We're going to draw the line on some items. I want to say one thing. The overall thing you must remember when the Dahmers come on, Jeffrey Dahmer lied, lied, and lied. Mm -hmm. Just keep that in mind when you listen to the Dahmer right. family. What this is about is who gets the money, who profits off of, serial, off of serial crimes and murders. Is it going to be the murderer and his family, or is it going to be the victims? 
and we got to be on the side of the victims, and that's what I'm all about. Right. And when we come right back, we'll talk to Mr. and Mrs. Dahmer. We'll be back in a moment. Okay. So why I, uh, I don't have the death penalty? Death would be uh, uh, preferable to uh, years of nothingness spent here.